Good morning, everyone. Welcome to New Testament Survey, BC 103. Last class, we looked at 2 Corinthians, and today we're going to study on the letter to Galatians. So before, uh, even before we could begin with our session, can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Good morning, Pimel. Good morning. Uh, can I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? Anthony Solomon, would you like to lead us in prayer? Good morning. Anyone from the class, you all can just unmute and uh, pray. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Anthony. Yes. Go ahead. Um, yeah, Heavenly Father, we worship and adore you. Give us the knowledge, the guidance as our teacher teaches your word. May you guide and protect us in the mighty name of Jesus. As we learn your word, may you give us the knowledge and understanding, the wisdom to do whatever our teachers teaches us and to learn your word in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me share the PowerPoint presentation with the class. Yes. So even before we could begin with our session, can I request one of you all, anyone from the class to share what is your viewpoint on the book of Galatians? What is that you know what Paul was writing the book to Galatians? Anyone from the class? What was the reason for Paul to write this letter? Uh, what was the purpose to write this letter? Or what was he writing to tell? Anyone from the class, if you know of anything. Okay, we'll just start the class without any delay. Uh, the book of Galatians is also known as the book of Liberty. And uh, this letter was written. Who is the author? I'm sure most of you all know the author of this letter. Who is the author? You can please unmute and speak. Who is the author of this letter? Paul. Yes, it is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was the author of this letter. And this letter was written approximately 49 to 55 AD. And it may have been written from the place called Corinth on uh, Paul's second missionary journey. So as Paul uh, was on his missionary journey, he gets a report, okay? He gets a report about the churches that he started, that he started. And one such letter that he receives was from Galatia, that the church that he started in Galatia has fallen into prey to the heresy that the false teachers are ministering to the Gentile believers in this church. Regarding what? That they have to submit themselves to the Mosaic law before they could become a Christian. So when Paul gets this report and he reads it, it disturbs him because it is reversing to the teaching what he taught them. So Paul immediately writes this letter to defend justification is by faith alone. And he warns this church of Galatia of the dreadful consequence of abandoning the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, which you get only through self, alone for salvation. Whereas the Galatians were so quick to decide, you know, they received the gospel very quick what uh, the uh, when Paul preached and now when the false teachers are preaching they are not able to reason it out or analyze but they quickly again accept their teaching so what Paul is saying is they were like very unclear they were disloyal to Paul's authority of apostleship 
So he starts uh, to write this letter defending his leadership. And at the same time, he refutes the false teaching of justification as through law. So that was the reason for him to write this letter. So we will go in deep and look into what happened. So one of the points here when we study this letter is uh, Paul is trying to be very stern with the Galatians. He's trying to, one of the reasons why he's trying to be stern is as a leader, yes, you need to be loving, you know, encouraging but at the same time he needs to be stirred to bring a correction in there okay so the whole letter is sounding little stern um very direct um yeah just give me a minute while i change the slide okay this is uh, the map of uh, map where we see um uh, Paul takes a different journey to different place. And here we see how Paul ministered in the place of Galatia during his first missionary journey. So, so what happened here in the southern Galatia? That is, uh, this is the Asia Minor. And in the southern Galatia uh, is the lower region of the Asia Minor. So the provinces visited by Apostle Paul on his first missionary journey includes Pam Pamphylia, Pisidia, if you can see here, Pamphylia is here. Pisidia. This there are two Antiochs. If you see in the map, this there's an Antioch here. Can you see my cursor that's moving? Class, are you able to see my cursor when I move on the map? Anthony. Okay, great. Thank you, Anthony, for confirming. So we have two Antioch. If you see near Syria, there's one Antioch in Syria. That is where they begin their journey. And this is the place where the Antioch of Syria is the place where when we study the book of Acts, it says first time the believers were called as the Christians. So this is the place which we talk about when we say Antioch in Syria. So there's another Antioch here in Galatia. This is called Antioch in Pisidia. Can you see that? It's here, Antioch in Pisidia. Okay, so I'll go a little slow so you can move your eyes on the map that is here. We will be covering these regions, okay, in Galatia as we study this book. Okay. So, um, Paul visited all these areas in his first missionary journey, and that is uh, Pamphylia, Pisidia, uh, Lyconia, and southern Phrygia. We see this in the map. So, what happened now? The people of this region had the reputation for being very hasty in nature. This was their nature. They were hasty, spontaneous, and impulsive in nature and also the people in this region had a reputation of being very argumentative and confrontational so they had a reputation of being very emotionally unstable and subjective so due to which we can see uh, this can be seen in lystra when we go a little deep little later we see uh, in lystra when Apostle Paul preached the gospel, people were very, uh, you know, fast to grasp or accept the gospel from Apostle Paul. The very moment, the next moment, you see they were ready to stone them. When the Judaizers came to Lystra and uh, shared what they experienced, they were ready immediately to stone an Apostle Paul instead of, you know, reasoning or listening to both sides. You see, they were very quick. They were very unstable in nature. And we also, uh, that was when we read in the book of Acts chapter 14, we see the nature of this listering people. Okay, this can also be seen in their very quickness to receive the gospel and quickness to change to another gospel. And um, the specific cities that Paul visited, and in most cases, left churches include like you know antioch and pisidia when we turn to acts chapter 13 uh, 
uh, yeah, most of it are in the book of Acts so that we can get the history of what happened in, in the region of Galatia. Acts chapter 13, verse 14 to 52, when we read in verse 14, he says, but when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So one thing that we notice in Apostle Paul's journey, whichever place he visited or you went to, to minister, to preach and teach, he first entered the Jewish synagogue. If there was one. If in the place where he went, there was no synagogue, then he, he would just start his ministry on the street by begged or literally yearned for more of the teaching from Apostle Paul. Now, why did Apostle Paul step out to the street? Because one of the reasons was when you read through the uh, through the <clears throat> through the chapter 13, we get to see eventually the Jewish people. Uh, I see some messages coming. Let me check. Yes, Anand. Ma'am, the network is improper, ma'am. Your okay, video is not. Okay. Okay. Just give me a minute. I'll switch on to the different network. Is it better now if I off the video? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's better, right? If I off the video. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anand. Okay, um, yeah, let me know. So I just put off the video, uh, but we'll continue with the teaching. Okay. So what Apostle Paul did when the when the Jews in the synagogue refused to receive. Immediately, Paul did not stop teaching, but then he stepped out to share among the Gentiles. And here we see a door been opened for Apostle Paul among the Gentiles, where the Gentile believer, I mean Gentiles, were ready to receive this gospel. And they went ahead, uh, you know, literally begging and asking Apostle Paul if he, if he can teach more, if he can teach more. Just give me a minute. Okay. <clears throat> Anand, if there's any fluctuation, please do let me know. Thank you. Okay. In in verse 44, in Acts chapter 13, verse 44, when we read, we see that Paul had citywide interest in his message and the multitudes came to hear him. So the Lord was transforming the people's heart uh, with the gospel message that Apostle Paul was sharing. They were, you know, multitudes from this place, Galatia, were turning uh, towards Apostle Paul's message, or they were receiving the gospel message that was preached to him. And in verse 45 and 46, we see that the Jews were moved with envy because they see the large multitude following him and the Gentiles been receiving this gospel message. Immediately, the Jews were envied and began to oppose Apostle Paul. So what happened in verse 46? 46. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. So they gave an answer to the uh, Judaizers who were coming against the gospel with Apostle Paul. 
you know because they said like because you're rejected god has opened a door for us with gentiles and then in 48 and 49 we see that paul had a great fruit among this gentiles ministry and in verse 50 we see that the jews strived uh, stirred up prominent leaders in the city and had paul and barnabas expelled from that region so that was very heartbreaking for Paul and Paul. But then one lesson that we need to learn from this very incident or much later also we will see is we see that Paul is carrying a never giving up attitude. If one door is closed, he moves on to the other. And here when, when they refused and when he was expelled from that city, he moved on. He never stayed back at Antioch of Pisidia, in Antioch in Pisidia, nor he returned back to Antioch in Syria where he started the missionary journey. But then what he did was, this is in the first missionary journey that we are talking about, okay? So it was Paul and Barnabas. So they immediately moved to the next place. In the map, we can see Iconium. Iconium. So they were here, um, Pisidia. Yeah, Pisidia is here. Now they move on to Iconium. Can we see this place here? Okay, from Antioch and Pisidia, they moved to Iconium. Now what happened in Iconium? Paul started again his ministry in the Jewish synagogue. We see that in chapter 14, Acts chapter 14. Can I request everyone to turn to the book of Acts? Turn to the book of Acts chapter 14 verse 1. Can I request one of you all to please unmute and read? So that we all are on the same page. The first one from the class. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, Nina. Please go ahead. Now it happened in Iconium that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the G Greeks, believed. It's the first verse, right? So, yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you. Actually, you can go ahead with verse 2 also. We can cover. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Thank you so much. So what we see here is first point. We see that Paul started his ministry by preaching in the Jewish synagogue. This was the norm for Apostle Paul to do whichever place he went in. And the second point we see is many Jews and Gentiles responded to the gospel message that Apostle Paul was sharing and they were coming into the faith. And the third point in verse 2, we see that the unbelieving Jews... They stirred both Jews and the Gentiles against the gospel, that is against Apostle Paul and Barnabas. Then, you know, eventually when we read verse 4 and 5, we see that, uh, you know, uh, eventually they got so bad, the situation went so bad, the violent attempts were made to harm them and even stone them to death. And in verse 5, Verse 5, it says, and when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews with their ruler to abuse and stone them, they, six, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and then Derby, cities of Lyconia and to the surrounding region. So when they refused, when they, um, uh, when they were forced to leave, so Apostle Paul left the place just for the sake of peace. He didn't want to defend anymore. He leaves his place and he moves on to the next place, Lystra. So we can see in the map, Lystra, Iconium to Lystra. Lystra is just below Iconium, okay? Yeah, so he goes to Lystra. Now, when he enters this city, Lystra, Paul again ministers in the street because there is no synagogue in this place. 
so he directly goes on the street verse 9 we see that chapter 14 verse 9 in the book of acts this man heard paul speaking paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed then verse 10 he says said with a loud voice stand up straight on your feet and he leaped and walked so as they entered Lystra, this is in verse 8, if you see. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. And you see, uh, there was a miracle, miracle that he did when he was preaching on the street. So when Paul healed this lame man, lame man, and the people who were around him, knowing this man from the birth that he was lame and now he has received strength in his leg and he was able to stand up stand straight and then walk immediately immediately see how quick they were and they you know claimed apostle paul and barnabas to be the gods and when people try to offer sacrifice to them as gods Paul and Barnabas, you know, they were so fierce, like, you know, they, you cannot put me in the place of God. You know, God is above everything and we need to be given that utter reverence to him and not to us. We are just servant of God, you know. So literally we see um, in the verse 13 to 18, when we read, he says, Apostle Paul rebuked the people for their idolatry nature. Now, people were so quick to receive them as their gods and they went beyond what was expected. They tried to offer sacrifice. When Paul rebuked, there was a correction. But then what happened? Now, the Jews uh, who refused to listen to Apostle Paul and Barnabas uh, in Antioch of Pisidia and they also another group from Iconium. So these Jews formed a group and they, when they heard that Apostle Paul and uh, Barnabas is ministering in Lystra, they came to Lystra and they enticed the people against Apostle Paul and Barnabas. So what happened? Instead of reasoning out, the people of Lystra came against Paul and Barnabas and they started to stone at Apostle Paul. We see verse 19, chapter 14, verse 19. They say, the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there and having persuaded the multitude, they stoned Apostle Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Now, these Judaizers, they literally want to stone Apostle Paul at the first place in Antioch of Pisidia itself. They just missed that. And then they tried to do that at Iconium. Even there he missed. But then they were successful in, um, in Lystra of stoning Apostle Paul and Barnabas. But what happened? Verse 20, we see that. When the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas, uh, Barnabas to Derby. So what we see is what you and I would do when we come across a um, difficult situation of hardship or persecution. Definitely, we would pray. Though the verse 20 does not say that the apostles gathered around and prayed, but then it is definitely for sure that, you know, when there was no hand to look upon, definitely the apostles gathered around, um, you know, uh, the disciples and apostles gathered around Apostle Paul and they prayed with one accord so that, you know, uh, he may be uh, brought back to life. We see the people in list are the very good in stoning. So when they stone, they know when a person is dead. It is not like they assume that Apostle Paul is dead, but then they stoned him literally to death. They, they, they knew, okay, he's dead. And they dragged him outside the city thinking they are dead. But then God is above everything. God uh, called Apostle Paul for a purpose. God cannot take him back without fulfilling that purpose in his life. You see, when we, all the apostles gathered around him and prayed, God brought back Apostle Paul back to life. He just got up. 
he arose and he departed from that city to the next city. Clearly, the scripture says that Apostle Paul went to the next city or to continue his missions. We need to pause and think here. Do we have the same attitude? The scripture does not say that when all the disciples prayed on Apostle Paul that he was completely healed, the bruises were went, that he was standing strong, he went. No, I don't think the bruises would have been on his skin. He would have been bleeding. His bones would have been hurt and aching. He would have literally dragged himself to the next city, Derby. But what is important here we see is the call on his life. The call was so strong that it strengthened him from inside out. Yes, there was a pain all around him, bruised, bleeding. But then there was something, there was a strength within him. And God has called him and God has strengthened him. We see that in, in chapter 14, verse 20, he just got up. He didn't even take time to rest. He just moved on to continue his missionary journey. Paul, he went to Derby, verse 21 says, and when they had preached the gospel to that city at Derby, and many um, and made many disciples there, after ministering to Derby, you know, Apostle Paul decides we left all these places like you know Antioch of Pisidia or in Iconium and Lystra. We left that place in very haste because of the uh, forceful persecution. So we left this place forcefully. So we'll do one thing. We can go back and visit all these places. They were believers who accepted the gospel of Christ. So we need to go back to these places, strengthen these believers so that they will come together and worship the Lord truly. So what happened? Paul left Derby. Okay. And he went back to Lystra and Iconium, and Antioch, and he strengthened the disciples who accepted the gospel, and he set the churches in order. And as he was returning, he also visited Perga and Pamphylia. You see, as he was returning from Derby, he went to Lystra, then he went to I um, Iconium, and then he went to Antioch in Pisidia, and on his way, he went to Perga. He went to Perga in Pamphylia. So in Acts 13, verse 13, Acts chapter 13, verse 13, and later in 14, 25, verse 25, we see where Apostle Paul had stopped briefly in Perga, very short period of time. And as he uh, entered into the Asia Minor, and here he preached in Perga, Perga, uh, about the gospel and people were accepted, accepted the gospel and they were turned. And then he returns to Antioch of Syria of where he started the journey and there he rested well. When we read in uh, chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, verse 28. <clears throat> Or 26 onwards, we see. Okay, 25 onwards we can take. Now when they preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. And then he rested well. So this is what happened in the first missionary journey. So what was the background for the book of Galatians? background. There were four reasons. First one we see in Paul's first missionary journey, Paul and Barnabas were sent out by the church of Antioch, church at Antioch in Syria. So the, the church in Antioch were growing strong and now they want to send out people on missions. 
So they sent Apostle Paul and Barnabas together to go minister to people at Galatia and start church. So uh, this was the principal method. The principal method was whichever place that Apostle Paul and Barnabas would step in, they will first step into the synagogue of the Jews. But if they refused to accept the gospel, only then they would step out to share the gospel with Gentiles. And very um, sincerely, they followed this method. And in the places where there was no synagogue, they started to minister on the streets, except, uh, expecting God to open a door among the <coughs> Gentiles. The second point we see is they had a great fruit on their first missionary journey. Yes, they had to face certain hardship in most of the places they were persecuted. They were uh, forcefully asked to be. Uh, they were forcefully, um, you know, asked to leave those cities. But then they saw there was a fruit. There was a people who received the gospel, grew strong. And even on his, um, you know, uh, uh, return, on his uh, inbound journey, uh, Apostle Paul visited those believers to strengthen them so that he can establish the church. So what happened? He was successful in establishing five churches in his first missionary journey. So... Uh, as I said, the five church is, uh, is um, Antioch in Pisidia. He started then in Iconium, then in Lystra, then in Derby, then in Perga in Pamphylia. Okay, these were the places where he started the five churches in his first missionary journey at Galatia. And uh, then they returned back to Antioch and they rested. Now, the second point we see uh, the background of this uh, letter is the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, verse 2 to 35. When we read, um, there was an assembly at Jerusalem Council and we see the senior pastor at Jerusalem Council was James. So they had to meet in this council to address certain conflicts or certain issues that they were coming across, encountering as they minister to people. So what was the issue? As <coughs> as Paul and Barnabas were ministering to the cities, to the Gentiles, many of the Jewish believers felt that Apostle Paul was only preaching half of the gospel. They felt that he was making it too easy for people to get saved. And, uh, you know, they came against Apostle Paul and said, how can you make it so easy for people to be saved? In, in fact, they have to uh, undergo the Judaism law of, uh, of being circumcised. And they have to keep the Old Testament law. So these were some of the issues that the uh, Jewish people were bringing uh, upon the Gentiles. So, and also even Apostle uh, um, and also Peter had the same kind of um, challenges. So what they did is they brought in the question or queries to the council where all the leaders gathered together in this council to come up with the right solution. And when we read Acts chapter 15, verse 6 to 18, we see what happened in this council. They prayed and they asked the Holy Spirit to minister to them, to take the right decision. So we see the leaders, you know, everyone came together and when they prayed, when they prayed and they started the meeting, the meeting started, the council started, and eventually uh, they had a heated discussion. When you see in chapter 5, 15, verse 7, it says, And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentile should hear the word of the gospel and believe. 
So what was Paul addressing? I mean, Peter addressing here. Peter was addressing and sharing the testimony of what happened in the house of Cornelius, of whom, you know, God asked Peter to go and minister to him. In fact, Peter was not ready. We know the story of what happened. But then here, Peter is sharing that testimony to the council. And then backing up, we see Paul and Barnabas also share their testimony of what was happening among the Gentiles in the area when they went and preached in Galatia. How the Gentiles were open enough to receive this gospel. And when they received what happened, there was a more of the Holy Spirit. So they started to testify all that happened in their first missionary journey. Now, James being the senior pastor of Jerusalem Church. Now, we see in the book of James, James literally write about wisdom of God, asking God to fill with the wisdom. Now, I know why, because there were a lot of dispute and queries coming up to James. Now, James need to take the right decision, which may please. So being the senior pastor, Am I connected? Is my voice audible? Is my voice audible? Okay, thank you, Nikhil. Okay, being the senior pastor, he summarized the discussion, shared the relevant scriptures, and he suggested a solution that was received by everyone. When we read um, chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, verse 13 to 22, because of time, we're not getting in detail. But eventually what happened is they prayed and seek God, seek God. And we see that, you know, there was a... Um, verse 16, we saw the hand of God and, um, you know, they got a proper solution was uh, given by James and for which all the leaders had received it in peace. And then uh, the last point we see, the, uh, uh, the third, uh, uh, no, uh, not last point, sorry. And in conclusion, in verse uh, 19 to 29, we see they all agreed on the demands that should be placed on the Gentile converters, like uh, circumcision should not be included because, um, you know, they are saved not by works, but by faith on Jesus Christ. So what happened? They all agreed that the letter should be written by the council, by the Jerusalem council and circulated among the churches and the leaders in Jerusalem so that everyone accept the same thing. Then we see the Judaizers and their mission. What happened? They, uh, they wanted to know what are these Judaizers trying to do in the church of Galatia. The Judaizers who did not accept the gospel of what uh, Paul, Apostle Paul was preaching, uh, they they wanted to go through the works and not by um, not by the grace of the gospel that was preached uh, by having faith on Jesus Christ you will be saved. They didn't want to do that, but they want to do. I mean, they wanted to have the works as well part of the teaching. So uh, they felt like Apostle Paul was sharing only a part of a gospel and not in full. So they came against Apostle Paul and they started to influence the other believers who were trying to accept uh, the teaching of Apostle Paul. So this was uh, definitely a concern uh, among the converts who converted to Christianity. So uh, when they were coming in under the ministry of Apostle Paul and Barnabas, uh, they were not able to give the attention to the matter of law. Um, and also they had uh, difficult to accept the matter what these Judaizers were bringing in. So, uh, you know, bringing in about the circumcision. So it was a Definitely a concern. That was one of the reasons where Apostle Paul and Barnabas wanted to meet uh, uh, the senior pastor James at the Jerusalem Council with all the other leaders and bring a solution so that the ministry will not be um, opposed or stopped uh, from sharing it to the Gentiles.
Okay. Some of the main concern that Apostle Paul had when he was ministering in these churches were that Paul found these churches and they were in danger of being destroyed by these false teaching because these Judaizers who wanted to implement the work of the law in them, they were, they were in fact, uh, you know, undermining Apostle Paul's teaching. They were trying to, uh, you know, that was one of the reasons why they were trying to oppose Apostle Paul. And uh, we also see that Apostle Paul was very upset with these Judaizers and he had no kind words on these uh, uh, Judah, uh, on these Judah, uh, false teachers where he was very straight, blunt and direct in accusing them. In fact, he just uh, uh, in, um, in chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, he literally says, just give me a minute while I turn to Galatians chapter 3. Yeah. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 he says he just calls these people as oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. You know, he goes much beyond till verse 5 and you see Apostle Paul is, uh, is, is very upset with the people for being so gullible. And Apostle Paul also rebukes the leaders of this church for giving heed to these false teachers. And further, uh, and in Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, when we read, um, when we read, we see that Apostle Paul was upset with Peter and some of the brethren from the Jerusalem church who seemed to be taking a back stand or a weak stand on this issue of the Gentiles or keeping up the law of Jews for some reason. Then Paul had, uh, Paul had to be firm with Apostle Peter and also the other brethren in the church so that the right kind of decision will be given. So, okay, let me change the slide. So next is we will go on to the outline. The outline of this book is in chapter um, chapter chapter one to two. We see Paul defends his apostleship, defends his leadership throughout the letter. We see Apostle Paul defending his leadership. So chapter one verse eleven to twelve. Can I request one of you all to read? I know we are running out on time. Okay, maybe one of this. Can I request one of you all to read chapter 1, verse 11 to 12? But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. So Paul defends his leadership here. And again, in, um, in chapter 3 to 4, we see Paul explains the doctrine of justification by faith. He goes ahead and emphasizes that he makes um, that all the work that is needed to be done for our salvation has, clear, has already been done by Jesus Christ on the cross. So he's asking the Galatians to put their faith on the work that Jesus did on the cross than observing to the law. And then we see chapter 5 to 6. He talks about some instruction and in the practical Christian living that results from a liberty in Christ. So the true freedom that we have is in Christ. This is the gospel that Apostle Paul carries and preaches across the Galatians. The freedom is in, is in Christ and not by keeping any rituals or any following any law. 
and also in this gospel we see that you know he explains in chapter 5 verse 16 to 26 due to time i'm not going uh, in detail but i request all to please make a note of the scripture galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 26 where he talks about walking in the spirit and also he talks about the contrast between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit and also he says the very purpose of the old testament law uh, old testament law and he explains it and um, he also says in galatians 2 16 to 17 he, he, he talks about the doctrine of justification was through faith in jesus christ so, you know, as we uh, approach the conclusion of this letter, we see certain things that Apostle Paul is making clear in chapter 6, that is the last chapter. Um, uh, yes, Apostle Paul does give uh, word, uh, he does not give words of praise as is usual format in the letters because uh, he's very stern in this letter. So when he was sounding stern, he's not giving any praise and uh, he, uh, he, un he is unusually harsh because he's upset with the Galatians for the hasty in nature. And also we see that he does not ask them for their prayers as is custom uh, with many other letters. And uh, lastly, in verse 11, chapter 6, verse 11, we see that he wrote the uh, this letter, entire letter in his own hand. He has not taken help from anyone. The theme of this, the letter to Galatians is Galatians chapter 2 verse 16, where it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even if we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For the works of for by the works of the law, no flesh can be justified. By saying that, I would like to, you know, um, conclude this letter by saying, though there were persecution, though there were false teachers coming against Apostle Paul teaching at the city of Galatia, there were a lot of persecution, but then Apostle Paul did not give up on the very call that God had upon him. We see, uh, uh, you know, not, um, not giving up nature in Apostle Paul and the same nature we see in God. God does not give up on us. Even though Apostle Paul was stoned to death and thrown out of the city, uh, thinking that he was dead, but then Lord raised him up. You know, God gave him the strength and he walked to another city. No matter what bruises uh, he carried in his body, but he did not give up on the mission that God has placed in his heart. Uh, the fire that was unquenchable within him. I think today as we study the letter to Galatians, um, even we today in our own life, in our ministry, in our church, uh, in whatever area we may be in, we, we do face our challenges. The mountain may not be the same like what Apostle Paul was facing, but uh, we do have a mountain that is standing against us. But here I would like to encourage and set our focus on Jesus, just like our Apostle Paul did. When we set a focus on Jesus, God will make a way on every mountain. God has the power to move that mountain, approve that mountain which is standing just front of us and cast it into the sea. God says, my grace is enough. Through faith, you can accomplish everything. And also he, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. When we hold on to God, you see the fruit of the Spirit being manifested in and through us. So let's carry this passion, this fire that Apostle Paul had within him. Okay, Apostle Paul never rebuked, I mean, uh, he never wasted his time going against his false teachers. But what he did is he, he again and again reinforced the gospel. So when we face our challenges, uh, we need to again and again get into the word of God, claim the word of God, speak the word of God, the, every promise that God has given us, because those are the things that will expel the mountain. Those are the things that will uh, establish us strongly in the, in the purpose that God has called each of us to do. Knowing that. So Paul, as he is uh, stern, 
is also a apostle who has encouraged the Galatians who believed in the gospel. He, he, he went back on his inward journey. You know, he goes to all the five churches. He encouraged the believers. He said, you stand strong to this gospel. And he said, Jesus is the source and power of the believer's new life and the heir of the promise to the Abraham seed. Today, the same word Apostle Paul is giving you and me, saying that no matter what you're going into through your life, no matter what opposition you may be facing in your ministry or the challenges at your workplace, it can be any area or any circumstance. But then Apostle Paul is encouraging you and me to look at Jesus as the source of power and deliverance. Okay, so let's look at Jesus and uh, end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request one of you all to please unmute and pray? And ask God, God, no matter what our situation is, help us to set our eyes, set our focus on you. Okay, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the revelation that you have for each of us from the letter of Galatians. Thank you, Lord, that you are ministering to each of us in the way that we can understand Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our life. Lord, we thank you for the word that Apostle Paul shared to us, and it's been documented, where we can refocus, reset our focus on you, because you are the God who is the source of everything, source of power, source of victory, source of strength. Lord, I pray and I surrender each of us in the class who's on campus, online, and also the students will be, uh, you know, watching this video later on e-learning. Lord, I lift up everyone into your hand. Lord, I pray that you will give us that faith, that strength that is needed to face our giants in different areas. Lord, thank you, Father, that you have set us free. There's liberty in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, as the believers in Galatia experience the liberty, the freedom in Jesus Christ. Help each one of us also, Lord, as we study this letter, to experience the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing it so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining in today's session. So tomorrow we'll study the next letter. Thank you. God bless.